Stuart. Hey, hello. What's going on, buddy? <laughs> Good to see you. All right. Let's crack the beers up. This is a ritual, isn't it? And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for those listening, not watching, Stu just cracked the bottle cap off his bottle with his uh, prosthetic leg. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did, did, do love the attention. I'm only joking. Uh, but right, before we crack on, I've been told by Luke Hardy that I need to clarify something. The name of the podcast, right? To, for people listening who don't like civvies, is civvies listen to this? But yeah, not even though the last two episodes I managed to slag them off in some way, shape, or form. Right? <laughs> it's called Hey Chower because uh, it's not because it's Hugh Hour. It's because. <laughs> H hour is the is the term you used to that you would reference the start of a, a battle with the hour that the battle starts, like D Day is the day a battle starts. H hour is the, is the hour a planned battle would start. It's not Hugh hour. And the second one is we want to give a um, a shout out to Aunt Herbie Hyde from from Three Para who's running a, an ultra marathon in uh, over four or five days. But let's have a look. Let me just get brought my memory here. Four or five days in uh, South America. He's doing it for a parachute regiment charity called support our paras he's been doing some absolute graft going in there he's at something like five thousand meters or or something 230 kilometers over, over five days he's running it on sunday all right um which obviously by the time it goes out that's, that's tomorrow so get on look for him on his just giving page look for parachute regiment just giving herbie hyde or go on to the support our paras website and page and you find it there where's he doing that the amazon is it, uh, the amazon, uh, is it? i'm having a look now mate because my prep route ah here we go Flipping out. The course runs from the Andes Mountains to the Madre de Dios River, with temperatures reaching 30 degrees during the day and dropping to 10 degrees at night. I said, they stay out in Ulu. It's like, I'm bring all this kit with him. It's, it's at, uh, I think there's a couple of other Power Edge lads. Um, Dennis O'Kane. And, yeah, Dennis O'Kane out in prep and support yeah. them do it. And another chap. Oh, I don't know the name of him. S- Smudger. Smudger. Smudger will do. Smudger. <laughs> Probably smudge. <laughs> See ya, he'll be out. Um, that's it for that stuff. Yeah. Cheers, fellas. Cheers. Good to see you. Stuart? Yeah. Remember the last time you were? Uh, when was the last time you uh, you two saw each other? It probably 2008. Was, that was it that long when, ago? It might be. You sec- when you went back to Afghan, 2008, was it, on that second tour? Um, yeah. And wasn't that the first time a British amputee had gone back to Afghan? Well, I'd say a war zone, but yeah, was no, it a, a just there'd, Afghan? There'd been another guy that had gone back to Iraq. Right. Uh, but he hadn't deployed, did he? On the, on the, he hadn't, um, deplo- he hadn't deployed in the front line, I mean. No, no. Whereas you went back to the Kajaki. Yeah, yeah, technically mm. not front line. You know, I mean, I mean, I told my missus that we were, I was uh, in Kandahar, you know, they weren't going to take me anywhere. They were, you know, the military wouldn't have the liability to take me anywhere, especially <laughs> then. She saw me on the news in Kajaki again with the turbine on, <laughs> and uh, obviously had words when I got back home. <laughs> how, long, how long did you go back on the, on the hill for? What's that? Oh, um, I don't know how long it was. Um, Did you stay down in the in the camp? Yeah, in Zeebrugge, in Fob Zeebrugge, and I saw um, I saw the do- uh, the dog again. Um, the dog? Yeah, there, there's a the dog. The black there. Labrador. The black Labrador. Yeah, it's I been rehomed in Hereford. Has it? Yeah, I've got some I go to, I go see him regularly. Um, that dog wasn't there in 2006. Tangy. It was a pup, 2008. tiny puppy. Uh, 2008. 2008. Yeah. 2008, she but was running. Oh, sorry, he was running around yeah. with the guys going out on patrol. He got uh, hit by, you know, he got IED shrapnel at one flank and was dripped by one of the medics in two power and brought back. He's got scars all up one side. He's awesome, mate. He's totally awesome. I don't remember. I, don't remember I, remember. I, will, I will fish out the pictures. I, I, I wait. I've got, got, yeah. I I got pictures of me with him from um, like a, a month ago. He's um, he's quite a little character. I'm not bothered about seeing pictures. Oh, I caught that much. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, how's life down in Monmouth, mate? Um, you love it down there, don't you? Have you seen where you've seen it, mate? No. Have you been to Monmouth? No, I haven't. Oh, my God. No, I, love, I love it. Yeah. I, I hadn't been there before, since I went to visit you. And, um, proper nice little, proper nice little town. You go in. Is it, it's Cobble Street, isn't it, in the middle? No. I just made that up. There's no Cobble yeah, Street in the middle. There's no Cobble Street in the middle. Nice little bridge, river going through it. It's proper nice. It's Wales, isn't it? As in, it's yeah, outside of the border. Yeah, it's, 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 it's straddled. It's been in... in English and Welsh ownership to and fro in, in the past, and it is always referred to before, like years ago, as being separate from either two. It was always England, Wales, and Monmouthshire. It was always sort of in between. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, they're, they're is this after the English invaded my land? <laughs> um, it's about know, the right time. It all gets quite blurred. It doesn't not to me. It but um, it's quite raw. But, but interestingly enough, there was when it only it became properly part of Wales post. I think it was World War Two. It might even be World War One. I've got no facts. Not prepared for this tonight at all. <laughs> right. uh, but basically, t- on, a, on a technicality, Monmouth is still at war with the Germans. Is that's it? Like a, that's like a new <laughs> How'd you cope with that in the war zone? <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, How did the people in Monmouth cope? They seemed alright when I went down in the beer gardens and that shop. Well, the, the, the Blitz has been alright recently. <laughs> <laughs> What's the technicality? It's the fact that Monmouth was separate at the start of the war, and then separate the to of, England. Yeah, referred to separately from I don't know the full facts, but referred to separately from England and Wales, right. and then was part of Wales at the end of the war. So they declared war on Germany and never technically declared the peace. Now, this is like something like Cornwall, where Cornwall, where they consider the themselves that, yeah, yeah. A, a separate yeah. beast. But did you know this? You probably know, because we had this conversation, that Cornwall, well, so the Welsh, the first two places Wales colonised, the second was Cornwall. Wales, the Welsh colonised Cornwall. The first place that Wales colonised? Strathclyde? Brittany, in France. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. You go there, mate, Welsh mules in the wall. Well, it's kind of like that, and in, and in Cornwall. And Patagonia as well. Patagonia, yeah, Patagonia. Was that a colony? No, just settlers that were working mm. the mines. Um, mm-hmm. Patagonia is a weird one, isn't it? There's, there's places down there that are like completely German, places down there that speak Welsh. You know. I was listening to a guy called... Um, a guy called... I don't remember what, right? And he's American Special Forces, and then he, he got out and he um, he went at the UFC, mixed martial arts, mm. very, very successful, right? And now he's got back in. He's been doing a series, and it's called Finding Hitler, okay? And it's based on this conspiracy that hundreds, not tens, hundreds of thousands of uh, Nazis, not like Civ Pop in Germany, but Nazis from the highest ranks down, bugged out after the war, Mm. Or towards the end of it, for um, Hitler did himself in and went to South America. And so to go there and try and, like, well, is this true or is it not? Because they reckon, this conspiracy reckons that Hitler's there. Yeah? yeah. And he was saying, you go there, and there are whole towns and villages, and it's German. Yeah, they speak German. And it's, you, you, you can't, and they can't uh, he's talking about Chile now, we're on about Chile, yeah. right? In Chile. Go in there, and he had to go in there, and Fries were like, I'm a tourist, I'm going to do a tourist channel year, and it's beautiful, because it's like a Bavarian village. In the middle of Chile, it's all German, like German style, everything. Culture, yeah. yeah. And he was, he said he was talking, to, he was talking to some of them, and once they accept them in, they're like, yes, yes, and they're like really proud of the heritage. Yeah. And they're like, yes. So how did you? So when did you come here? He said they're all loaded as well. He said there's no, they're all loaded. They're like second or third generation Germans. Yeah, oh, he's gone there. Where's all your money come from? Right, and he's saying he's got all his stuff, and he's saying one family goes in. He said one of the first ones he goes into, and he starts realizing what the mindset of these people. This is recent, right? And he says, um, he says, so, so when did you come here? I said, oh yes, my 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 father, I've lived here, and my my grandfather came across here. Said, oh right, okay, and then you go, yes, and she would then start talking very proudly about what he did. He was a soldier, and da da da. And you understand that he was a you know a Nazi, da da da. Mm-hmm. Yes, let me show you some of his things. Comes out got the knife, all the old Nazi yeah. like artifacts and that and it's in like, in like a, a silk cloth over the top of this can't get any dust on it and showing it like full on. This is amazing. Mm. The kids the, the the kids, the adults, it's uh, it's a complete um taboo thing to go in go and uh, have a relationship with non white Aryan people, you know, the full on Nazi Attitudes, but because that's how they've been for two, three generations, that's how they've been brought up completely enclosed. That's all they know. They don't know that that for fifty years the Nazis have been hated. You know what I mean? It's crazy. And finding oh, Hitler, it's called. Oh, it's, oh, it is Tim Kennedy, I mental. Think. And they, yes, Tim, Tim Kennedy. Tim you listened to the same one, didn't you? I did. I think I turned it off very quickly. He, he spoke something. He's talking about shooting because he's ex SF and he's mm. uh, Ranger. He's back in now. And he was talking about. Um, Six second bullet flight times or something, and I was like, "Oh, no, I bit, he's gone. No, not listening to anymore." Don't so know what about. Joe, Joe Rogan goes to him and says, um, "Here's Joe Rogan's podcast, isn't it?" And it says was, to yeah, him, yeah. "So, so based on what you know now, yeah. and Tim Kennedy is down to earth, mate. He, he tells it like he is, right? He tells it like he is. He tells it like it is, and uh, and he gets asked, so based on what you know now, what's your feeling? 
because the conspiracy was Hitler's there, yeah. right? This escape there. Yeah. Like, who was the German general who died in the beach there? Like, chilling out. It was some. It was some. It was the the head, not the general. It was the scientist, the hideous scientist, mate, who experimented on all the kids and that. Because they were still doing it in Chile. Um, and he says, "What's your gut feeling? Do you think Hitler shot himself in um, Germany, or do you think he's there or died there?" And he says, "He died there." And one of the thi- one of the fact that you didn't listen to it, Austria, did you? One of the, one of the facts he brings up is he says the Russians got Hitler's body. Yeah, this is fact. The Russians got Hitler's body. The Allies at the time they want to go and confirm, confirm, confirm it's Hitler. Blah, blah, blah. The Russians went, ah, 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 ah. no, 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 no. A couple of decades later, or maybe a few years later, or a pe- significant period of time later, the files got released of the autopsy, and they went and re-got the body, and the body wasn't even male. This is Hitler's body. Mm. The head wasn't even so male. So what you're saying is... It was a female 35-year-old. So mm. Hitler was transgender. That's, that's what Hitler was transgender. Hitler was, trans- uh, that, Hitler was transgender. With? How did we get did to that? that? Did I? You just said he had a female skull. You hear it here first. The, you hear <laughs> it. <laughs> that's the bombshell. <laughs> he was transgender, Chilean, and uh, Cornwall. From Cornwall, apparently. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, you should listen to all that. Listen to all that show, mm. mate. It's flipping beast. Um, did you see... Uh, we've got a news flash. I just had some information. Within, within the last hour, mm. that the army are changing their fitness tests to be non-gender specific. I don't mean like that. It doesn't take into account your uh, your what what gender you are. You have to meet the standards, whatever they are. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is starting next year, January next year. They're getting rid of the BFT. Yeah, and it's going to go to two kilometres in eleven minutes. Plus a 30 meter sprint. But it doesn't say what the criteria is for 30 meter sprint, right? Mm-hmm. The the CFT, I think the CFT is going to continue until 2021. That's the backpack carrying yeah. beast, eight miler. Yeah. Like 2021. Hours, doesn't say what's happening after that though. As part of the normal fitness test as well, you're going to have um, you're going to have to be able to straight lift 35 kilos, deadlift 75 kilos, which is an interesting one. That's not that's quite a lot for. Like, if you're mm, slight, mm. like, and maybe not male, yeah, right. um, and what was the other one? Ah, oh, four, four pull-ups. But the big, I think the big one is, they're not, they're not, there's no difference between male and female, but then, that, that, is that not That's less good. than what it is now for blokes? It's nine and a half minutes now, isn't it, for blokes? No, it needs power edge, I think. Yeah, it's ten and a half. Ten and a half minutes for standard. Ten and a half. Oh, so they're making it slower for the mile and a half? No. Two kilometres is one point. That's two well, power, power Reg have 9.30, don't they? Mm-hmm. Which is but funny, because when you get to Battalion, it suddenly changed to 9.15. And yeah. then basically, <laughs> you don't want to be going over nine yeah. minutes, really. It's, it's five minutes before five minutes. <laughs> yeah. you, you add, yeah. you know... So, so you, uh, do, you, do your, you do your P company, you're like, oh my God, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. And you get to Battalion, and you're on uh, you're on John Hardy's flipping... What, did he, what was John Hardy's quad athlon? Ten miler, two miler, oh, assault course, and a swim on the same day. Ten miler with a difference, wasn't it, or something? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you had the you had the two miler double bubble. You did the two miler stop, and then just go straight away again. Yeah. They wouldn't like the to do ten milers, so they did an eight miler followed by a two miler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the ten yeah. milers. Oh Mental. my god. Yeah. Are you uh, that in your uh, in your shop down in uh, down in Monmouth? You get you know, ones of hobbies yeah, and games. Yeah, tell us yeah, tell us about that. What you're doing? There. Yeah, it's it's um a hobbies and game shop. So basically, a, a normal shop selling things like the, your air fix kits. You know, your different types of aircraft, different scales, uh, what have you, um, and all the paints and stuff. The hobby aspect of it. Um, the war, all the historical stuff, so Napoleon, Napoleonics, the soldiers and everything, and also the game systems that support them, as well as board games and card games. And when you say game systems, what do you mean? Is that Warhammer? He's thinking like Xbox. Uh, no, War, think Warhammer's, Warhammer does well for me, because yeah. it, it's just a really strong sort of product. They, you know, yeah. They're doing really well. They've had the Monopoly for a long time, GW, but there are loads of other game systems. Do you know what he does? Do you know what he does? No. Well, you have done. Because in a lot of these games, right, you get your you get your pieces. You know, it's down to you what your what oh. your map is and your landscape. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm wrong quite a lot on you. He Makes has sense. formed like Sangin, relive the battle of oh, yeah. an Arnhem and all that. So you set it yeah. up, and, but you, when you go to do it, you've got the same troops as they had on the day, yeah. the same assets, the same all that, don't you? Not, you have, don't not you? quite. People do, but we've, you've done we've it. Not quite. 
You did no, banging? The, um, <laughs> no, I've had something similar, but it's not to scale because you can't. And I've had this conversation, an argument with some of my customers before who want like really realistic games. And I say, well, if you want a really realistic game, um, for a start, one guy's going to be on one table, that guy's going to be over there, and the range of the weapons is going to be out to the car park over there because it doesn't translate. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, if they don't quite get it. They want more stuff on the table, but it's like no. If we're if we're doing realistic, you, people are going to have tactical bangs and spacings, so they're going to mm. be way over there, and it's it's not going to be a fun game to play. So it, the game systems compress everything, so it's more like playing a Hollywood version of one. Yeah, but it's still just as fun, you know. When I went down the first time, we we played um, a Star Wars game, didn't we? Because I was skeptical. I mean, this is proper pest stuff, right? Yeah. And it's I'm imagining it's like that Warhammer style. That's what. Yeah. That's what it varies, doesn't it? It, all off. it was a lot of the other, these other games came from the people that made Warhammer back in the early nineties. Yeah. But they, the company got so big, I think they they put it on the stock market. They made it publicly owned, and then they went off and formed their own other games companies, and they wrote rule sets for different different game systems. And there's loads, there's loads of different things. Were you into all this when you was when we were using? Um, no, I was before I joined the army. Um, no. Obviously, if I started painting uh, models and stuff in decently block, uh, <laughs> they would thrown out the window, out wouldn't it? By, <laughs> by Craig Coatesworth or something, you know, it 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 just get it get launched. Yeah, but you, you know but I, mean? I tell you what, you were that you are now mm-hmm. is a World of Warcraft. Geek. I, I never was when I was you, in. Yes, you were. No. Yes, you were. After, you were. I remember yeah. walking into this room, mate, and <laughs> mate, he, he used to have his laptop set by his bed, and he'd be up until like three in the morning, and he, he used to sleep naked, I know, because he used to watch him at night. I'm joking. He did sleep naked, though. And I walk in one morning, I've got a photo of it somewhere, walk in, the stew, he's rolled out of his bed, let it do it back, he's rolled out of his bed, mate, so he's bed head. he's rolled onto his chair, right next to his thing, and he sat on his laptop, He's naked. He's not even dressed. <laughs> and he's straight in the wheel of Warcraft. I've got a, we've got a, we've got a clan meeting. We've got a clan attack coming on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've got a photo of Stu. I ain't making it up. You know I'm not. Unless it was, unless it was Rome, total, total it was war. Rome, total war in the block. It doesn't make anybody even naked. Yeah, yeah. Why else would you play? Block was good, and we used to connect up all the Xboxes and play your yeah, Halo. Used to play Call of Duty before it was cool. Halo and then Call of Duty. Oh. Yeah. That was, that was pretty Connecting good. Connecting everything through the. Through the uh, loft of uh, D Company Block. And yeah, the, that, that hiding was the days before. Um, that was the days before. You could get, I remember organising the, the internet for the whole block. Yeah. People, <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? It was like I had to get BT in. I had to pretend that the property was mine. I'm on a barracks, right? Yes, this is my property. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember? The engineer comes in, puts the, puts the router in. Then we got. A, I got a. I got a. Um, oh, not a switch box. A. Uh, a flipping, you know, loads of ports and that kind of what they're called, networking box, whatever. And then find all the cables into all the rooms. And the, mm. But they went in there, it was hideously slow. But we had it for every floor, the main block. We, mm. and we were the only block, we were the only block in the whole of three, three part of any internet. Mm. That was, but that wasn't long ago. Well, that was, was that was, thing. that was 2007, 2008, 2009, mate. No, it wasn't. It was way before then. Well, it's interesting you say that because we did move into the camp until 2007, mate. What camp are you on about? Mooville. Oh, right, I was on about oh, Hyderabad. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was on about Hyderabad as well. <laughs> yes, no, you are, you was Hyderabad. Yeah, so yeah. yeah what, so 2003, pre, 2004? Pre, uh, so yeah, Mongo. It's pre-06, mate, because I wasn't injured. I remember. Yeah. That was, yeah, you're right, yeah, because we, yeah, we moved out of it. I remember when I come across... It's like trying to recall stuff. <laughs> I remember when I come across the D Company, I didn't even have a bed space. There weren't enough beds. I'd slept in someone else's bed space. Benny's, Benfield. What, Kiwi Benny? Yeah. Benny, He's a nice yeah. I slept in his bed, so I'd wake up every morning with pictures of his mum and dad looking at me in the bed, you know. <laughs> Where was he? So, yeah. he, was on a, he was on a course or something, yeah. yeah so he? I'd like, yeah. I was in his, until there's available bed space enough. <laughs> Benny, yeah. my mother, my mother fancied the pants off him. Everyone loved Benny. Yeah, they did. He's yeah. doing, oh, yeah. some, he's doing some good stuff now as well, isn't he? Yeah. He's um, shooting. We were in a... Yeah, we, do you remember, yeah. we, we went to church, as in the church, the drinking church mm. and, uh, in London, and we went to uh, Shetter's Bush walk about after, yeah. and we went in there. <laughs> is, this, is, this your, is this your escalator <laughs> incident? Because you might want to mention that. That was before. No, no, no. <laughs> so, so we go in there, right, and, and uh, me, you, Benny, Kiwi, Berry, so Kiwi, Benny, Kiwi, oh. Berry, Billy Smart and that, and... Uh, Benny said next to him, he, he, just said, he would just say anything, anything to get the female attention. And he says, uh, and they overhear him, and he's going, yeah, 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 you know, I'm a paratrooper, you know, I'm a killer, I'm a trained sniper, 
but I'm not like all the rest of those guys. <laughs> I've got a heart as well. <laughs> <laughs> you got what you're talking about. Unbelievable. He's, he, um, he's, he has a column in a couple of shooting magazines oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in he's, New Zealand, hasn't he? Because he busted, he broke his back. Mm. Broke his back jumping. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but he can still walk now, but he walks all funny. Dances all funny, I know that. <laughs> and uh, and then he went, he he got something big into golf as well, didn't he? Wasn't he going to set up some golf course at one point? He did quite a bit. He's a big golf, wasn't he? Now, yeah, he's he's all over the place shooting. And he's, I think they've got a podcast out there. And he's quite a, it's quite a popular magazine because the hunting mm. out there is mm. massive, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Massive. Yeah, I think he invited me over. Last time I spoke to him on Facebook, he, he said, come on over, on. It's a long way, yeah, isn't it? It's a long way, yeah. yeah. It's not cheap at all. It's not you can't it's do on a all. weekend. You go to Florida all the time, don't you? Not all the time, no. Every year? No. Do you go to, did you, you still got your place in Spain? I no, I've never had a place in Spain. Do you? I don't think no. so. Oh, no, my missus, um, this is how I switched on, my missus is. When she had, she had some money from when she wrapped up the business and stuff, and the banks were, this was when, the, I think this was when the Northern Rock incident happened and that, and she was flapping a little bit with mm. the savings rates were going down and, you know, it was when all that sort of disaster started happening. So, and I was freshly injured at the time as well, so I wasn't thinking straight, but mm. she, uh, she came back into the house one day from being out shopping. She was like, yeah, I went out, got some, got some milk, got some bread, and um, I bought a place in Italy just to make sure that the, um, the money keeps its value. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> so she just bought property, not very expensive, but just so that the money would be safe mm. in bricks and mortar mm. elsewhere, where mm. the economy was a little bit slower, not so so much boom mm. and bust of rear. And she's pretty switched on. Still got it? Yeah. So yeah. Do you rent it out or what? Um, no, it's probably full of refugees now. But uh, <laughs> it's, down in, it's down in Calabria. But, That's very um, charitable. That's very charitable. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? charitable no, yeah. I, th- I, th- I think it's just, she's going to, we're going to do something with it eventually. But it's just there to, to keep money. A nest egg. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, difficult to properly. I mean, I was, I imagined that I had loads of money the other day. And I thought, I'll, I'll buy some properties and, um, and like rent them out and get lodges in, not lodges, get people in rent them out. But then I was, I was talking to someone else, um, a mate who, who's got, he's only got one property, um, and he rents that out, and it's near to where he is, where he lives now. He's, he's, um, he's ex Tupar actually. And, uh, was it him saying it? Or someone else. I'll say it was him. Uh, he listened to this as well. But he was saying it's a nightmare. He says the stress of it. That oh. wasn't him, it was someone else. But the stress of it, like, you get the wrong tenant in. Mm. Or, yeah, you're getting the mortgage paid and all of that. But this, if you get you maniacs in, or you have a period where you don't have anyone in, it's just, it's just an oh. absolute nightmare. For the for the return on investment, these days, with the you got the rates on, if you, you know, you're, you're buying the rent and all that, apparently it's just not worth doing with the stress. Levels, I don't know. Yeah, they'll tax you to death. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But I remember you saying last year, being having business in Wales, that the Welsh business rates went through the roof, like crazy to the roof. Yeah, it depends in the particular area, but like particularly in Monmouth, it's terrible now. There's shops shutting down all up and down the high street. Um, it's mainly charity shops now because they get the tax relief and stuff. There's what with charity shops? Charity right? shops because they don't there's, pay. There's none of those loads. No, there is just charity shops oh, right, at the yeah, moment. Yeah. That's how it's going. Yeah. Mm. You know, coffee shops and charity shops. It's similar in England, though. Well, wait, yeah. there's a, but, but is that not just normal business life? Open, shut, open, shut. Yeah. It hikes up every now and again because they've got to readdress uh, the value based on the rent and everything. So mm. you expect an increase. But for instance, my tax increased 450%. Jesus yeah, it, it, it wasn't fair. And then if I'd just over, over what period? So you were paying this amount? Well, over one day. It went from 450% overnight. What? Yeah. Why didn't they inc- increment it? That's crazy. <laughs> they, I kind of shot myself in the foot with that one. Because I, Did you uh, make things up? No. I chopped my shop in half and made it two separate shops. Right. And then I did, and, and what that did was they... Reevalued it, and instead of being two slightly smaller values, they reevalued it being more than what it was combined, even though there was less floor space. Right. And they all say because it was technically a new shop, I wasn't, uh, in, uh, I wasn't allowed any of the rate relief either. So I just got double shafted because I tried to beat, <laughs> I tried, tried to, to beat, beat uh, yeah, I tried to beat it, and uh, yeah, <laughs> they, they won. So, <laughs> so that was a bit of a kick in the teeth. But it, it's, it's bad in Monmouth because you just see in shops shutting up down the high street, and it, it's just killing the character of the town, to be honest. Yeah. But then you go just over um, over the border in, in parts of England, and the rate's gone down, you know? So, yeah. Uh, why are the rates going up in Wales, then? Why is that? 
what, what's um, the I don't know. You, you try and ask people, and it's the old sloping shoulders. It's like, you know, the, the, the council didn't set it. It's a VOA task. <coughs> you speak to VOA, and they're like, well, the cat. What's the, the VOA? The, the value of people of value, basically. It's like yeah. a, they're the people that state the values. Yeah. But then they sort of blame the council, and, the, and then it all falls back to central government. Uh, but it doesn't go to, to Westminster. It's Welsh government, mm-hmm. and it's Welsh Labour. They set the rates. So, mm-hmm. you know. It's, everyone's got sloping shoulders and there's no, no one sort mm. of wants to... It, the, the people are trying to do stuff about it, you know. Our our, um, our local MP does what he can. You know, who, he's who a good is that? Guy. Um, David Davis. He's not, He'd he's be not, around for he's years. Not the guy, he's not the guy that's the Brexit minister and stuff like that. He's oh. a... He's a... Looks, he's, he's a XTA guy. He's really good. Mm-hmm. He's saying he's mm-hmm. friendly forces like, but... It says you can't do much about it. Well, is the is the uh, is the defence minister now not ex forces? Should be. It's like the highest rank. Sure, in the army, is isn't it? Isn't it? So or or the shad the shadow defence minister. One of them high up is the the is ex forces. I don't know which unit. But Dan Jarvis is doing well. Mm-hmm. Dan Jarvis, ex three power. Yeah, he's, he's doing two well. power, isn't he? Oh, true power. So yeah, two mm. power. Yeah, yeah. But he, um, but he was. Uh, I, mean, I know last year he was looking at. There was talk of him being the, the late, new Labour leader, wasn't there? Yeah. After Corbyn. Was it Corbyn? Yeah, yeah Corbyn's current one, yeah. Mm, but I don't know what happened there, but hopefully he's still in the running. Well, It'd be nice to have someone like that And then, um, Lee Clayton was doing that for a while as well, wasn't he? Lee Clayton he went UKIP, didn't he? I thought he was an estate agent. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was an estate agent. Yeah, he is, but he, but he became a, a, a local MP, minister. Yeah. No, not an MP. Oh, an MP. No, 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 a local min- a local count minister, a local councillor, I think, or a pa- like a parish. I, th- I think the way it works is parish minister, local councillor, and then you work up to like well, minister of parliament. But he was doing that. I'm sure it was UK, yeah. But he, man, he was always mega confident. He, I just remember him being mega intelligent, and you could never win an argument with him no, ever, well, yeah. even if he knew he was wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he always beat you in an argument. It's a flipping nightmare, hmm. absolute nightmare. Yeah, so is it, I didn't really realise he was an estate agent. I thought Stuart Toole might have done something political, just because he's so good at speaking. Yeah. And he's creating an argument, because I remember the inquest, the Kajaki inquest, they tried to trip him up so many times on his testimony and things. When they're oh, what, what were they trying to catch him out with? What were they, what, what were they, they trying to prove? Trying to, bla- trying to, not establish blame, but in investigating it, trying to get all the facts out, but... You could see they were kind of going after them, and we were warned off ourselves that when you get questioned, it might anger you a bit because mm. they'll be they'll be grilling you in such mm. a way, and your attitude will be, well, you weren't there, you know. Mm. Um, but and I think they tried they tried to do that, that same thing as uh, Stuart Tool, but he just ran rings around them. He just talked over them, shut them up, and just dominated. The know, thing is, is that um, is that uh, that day, um, like the the film came out and uh, and. The the and obviously like I was involved with the production of it and I know that the the production company were flipping amazing. You had Paul Kate as the director, Lucy Trent the producer, and you had um mate, you had Oscar winner Williams. Oscar no, winner. No, um, oh man, is it Gareth something? Gareth Ellis Emwin. What a yes, what, yeah. what an awesome guy, like mega guy. Um, Ray Ray Atten, we call him a friend. He's a really really good guy. All of them just amazing people, and they all you know they, mm. they that production of where they try to betray your incident. Mm. Which I thought it did very well. That changed all of them. I know it did. I know it did. Like they look the things in a, in a completely different way. Honest to God, I know from speaking. I mean, Lucy's a really good friend of mine. Now I've spoken with you know Gareth. I'm still in touch with a lot of the actors. Luke, even more so, very heavily uh, still in touch with them. And, and but not the Esther Chase. They are with him. And uh, I know some like Scott Scott Kyle who played Stu Pierce and they're still in touch. I don't mm. know if you speak to Ben, but but the thing is with the film is that it was very difficult to portray. Uh, to, to to show that you watch the film and, and for the layman if that's the right term you look at it and you think well hang on a minute you had all these assets and all this why didn't this happen why didn't that happen why didn't this happen and they tried to show it in the film that that day the, the day of days in yeah. it was flipping mental we were in Musakala with didn't we have the that's when we got taken out on the roof that was that day you had the you had you guys in the minefield in a jackie, and at the same time in Sangin, there was some uber contact oh. going on in Sangin, wasn't there? And uh, it's like, and it was just three power. <laughs> yeah, and it was the guy from um, you only so many before this. that was injured before died, just happened to die that on was, that, that day was, later was, on. That was Muirhead. That was Muirhead. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It was me and me and Drive found him on the roof. Him and him and Driver. 
Um, yeah, it was a day of days. Yeah. It was. It was flipping crazy. That was a crazy day. Now that, that's. Fun. I'll it never is. forget when it it come across on the radio. Yeah. I'd, and you heard his zap number, shoes zap number, but we weren't sure if it was his or not. And it wasn't until later on we like. No, I knew it was his. It. No, I knew it was his. It was, it was before that when we when you and I you were in Nozad. And someone got um, taken out in uh, Sangen, mm. and the Zap number came across, and we weren't sure it was one of our guys. I didn't know the Zap number, but then when yours came across, I knew yours. Mm. And you, no, I knew all the teams. Yeah. Yeah. Zero nine eight three. You are one three one one. Um, is uh, I can't say. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I knew all. I knew all. So, yeah, and then yours came across, I like, fuck, I know. Because we'd not long finished what we were doing. What, what was going on in the sky? Oh, that day. I don't know. Six. I can't remember much. Six That's, bongo, I can't man. remember much about anything back in, like, in Afghanistan. Read my, the book, mate. It's my, I can't, I can't, read the book. I can't, <laughs> can't bring myself to read any of them books either. I, I don't no. I scan through and find my name. Just read a bit where it says my name, you know. And I, I, see, I just can't. Yeah. I've got like a mental block on the, a lot of Afghan, mm. what's happened, and I can't bring myself to. I've not even watched Kajaki the film. I've got it, but I've not watched it. Do you know what? I just I, can't bring myself I don't do to, the books. I don't know why. It's just like, I'm like, no, I just don't want to. Yeah, it's weird. I'm the same way with the books. I don't read any of them. No. Like, I'll stand for and you. I was like, oh, yeah. I want to see what's said about me. And then, um, but with the film, it's not like, uh, it's not, you, you don't, I didn't watch it, I think, like from a, no, I, like, I'm sort of re-experiencing it kind of thing. You know, I wasn't there. Mm-hmm. It was you that asked you. Yeah. It's because it's. I'm gonna blow my own trumpet. Luke Moore, so Luke's own trumpet, yeah, and the and the producers, production company. Because it's so accurate, it's actually almost enjoyable in some respects to watch. You watching b- the blokes on TV be portrayed like proper so the way they're talking, mate. Like when Scott Kai is playing mm-hmm. Stu Pearson, he 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 sounds he's saying the things that Stu Pearson's mm-hmm. saying. Like we, oh. I ended up going through the script and and at the start and. Before the production, the like the film even started, and when I did the notes, because the script was amazing, it was written by <laughs> Paul Williams. Yes, yes, Ta- he's, he's on Twitter as Taj, Taj Williams, isn't he? or something yeah, like that. Yeah. On his emails, Taj Williams, just giving yeah. his email away. There you go. Um, brilliant story, done it really well, but it's written a civilian writing it. Mm-hmm. So the way they were talking and slagging each other off just wasn't accurate. So I, I went through it. Or a few days, they all notes. So my notes alone were seven thousand words. It was just changing things like, no, 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 you wouldn't, no, he wouldn't have said, oh, you, uh, you buffoon. He wouldn't have said, you <laughs> fucking idiot. You know, he would have been, yeah, yeah. You, you know, all the the, the the sort of the slang and yeah, yeah. and uh, and all that wrote all in there. So when they're talking, mate, it's, it's, it's bang on. And Scott Kyle, the way because they spent time with. Yeah. yeah. So like Scott Kyle, Scott, Scott Kyle spent time with Stu Pierce and learning his manners and all that. You know, Ben Mahoney spent time with you. Yeah. Um, uh, so the way, so they knew they were really spoken that. Ben, ben, ben Mahoney, a Bristolian. He's from Bradford upon Avon. So he's, <laughs> he might as well be from. Yeah, yeah. He's he put brilliant. on the accent. A little bit more. You, you all, <laughs> if it wasn't, you can see it's not Stu Avon or Stu Risen. You would think. Yeah. By the, you know, the way they're talking. Yeah. It's, it's good though. Like when I first met him, I shook his hand and everything, and he. He he looked at me, and immediately after he shook my hand, he started to copy my posture. Like no he way. was he was on the job. Oh really? Yeah. He was on the job as soon as we met, and uh, yeah, it was quite it was quite weird. He just kept looking across at me mm. and trying, you know. So what he did? Is he he come and spend the day with you and just follow no, you we, around. No, we, we all met up in uh, Colchester. Basically, they took them through because free power didn't condemn the film, which right. I think was a mistake. Well, it did after. Right? Yeah, after, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they were obviously... Oh, with, like, yeah. You know what the MOD's like, they're yeah. scared of the media. It's not like the US, where they embrace it, and yeah. it actually does work for them. The MOD generally is scared and wants to keep the media away, you know. So they they had that attitude, and they weren't. And, and my argument always was with, with them was, if you embrace it, you can have some influence over it. So yeah. if you're not happy with yeah. something, you can... Yeah. And that was my attitude. If yeah. you just said, if you just pushed them away and said, yeah. whatever, don't want anything to do with it, yeah. that's then carte blanche to do what they want. And then they... Might have made, they don't think it would have, but they could have made a film that might have sold more, but was nowhere near accurate. And, they, and for them, they were making the film for us. They wanted to make it as, as um, you know, as realistic as possible, which is why they sent us the scripts and stuff. And yeah. you know, guys red penned it back and and changed things. They were. The thing is, it was so touchy. At the same time, mate, at the same time as they were trying to get that MOD support, because they wanted to get the yeah. MOD support. They didn't want, like, yeah, they didn't want to Paul. Do it. Mm. 
it didn't want to annoy anyone. It's yeah. like because it's good for them. Get yeah, the MDB I, tried, I, tried MDB to make him, I tried to make him annoy people. I said I said make it the film they tried to ban. You know, it worked for Andy McNabb. I, I was going to get I was going down that <laughs> create create a bit of controversy, mm. and, they, and they were like, no, 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 we don't want to keep them on side. And I yeah, like, I, mate, I, I, I have the same conversations. Like, well, I tell you what, if they don't come on, if they don't come on side and they say and they actually say something against it. Yeah. The best thing for you publicity wise is to do exactly what you're saying yeah. to you. And then again, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. Yeah. No, it. because it's not, they, they were that honest with their intentions. Mm-hmm. No, no, look, we just want to make it as accurate as they can. But the problem was, is that um, it became that. Because in- inevitably, oh. the press got hold of that. Because they ain't stupid. If you've got a military film coming out and the MOD haven't come out and said, yeah, yeah, we're supporting this, then the press is going to go to them for a quote. And you don't get a quote back saying, yeah, well, what does that mean? Well, mm-hmm. They can, that gives the, the press license to say the MOD aren't supporting it and they shot themselves mm-hmm. in the foot exactly with it but it was so controversial because one of the one of the arguments always was that uh, you know it didn't have the logistic uh, support and all the rest of it and there the, they weren't and there weren't enough helicopters in the theatre with the winches on the Chinooks in there with the winches on right and at the time that this was happening the production was happening there was a person in a very 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 senior position down in Whitehall, a military position, who at the time had been the head of procurement, I don't know what the actual title was, the head of procurement for um, JHC, Joint Helicopter Command, at the time of this, who would have had a a huge influence on what kit goes into what helicopters and what. That's not to say it's his fault, but that, that would have been sort of... Uh, Guilty by uh, guilty by association for that person, and just uh, I'm not saying that that caused it, but so many things, mate. Which just mm. they, j- yeah. but the MOD just just did, did it the wrong way. They did it the wrong yeah. way. Yeah, and so basically to get to know the actors and basically put them through a mini P company is what uh, they did through the other, the other through thing, unofficial lines, you know, yeah. through um. Tiddy took over that, didn't he? And no, we, yeah, we did that. Yeah, so lo, lo, we so through through Fort Nine Group, we organised because um, we did all the military advising. So me and Luke did all the military advising. And I said me and Luke I did was going to come and help, but I had a fishing trip in Thailand to go on to this. So fortunately, uh, yeah, priorities, yeah, priorities, yeah. and um, yeah. So we uh, so we got um, got a bunch of people on board, got like Tiddy on board. Um, yeah, Tiddy and a bunch of others. And we did the boot camp in Colchester mm. on MOD training ground. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know why he did it now. He was a nightmare. <laughs> a couple of the guys were still serving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but, but I remember one of the last things, <laughs> one of the last things we did was, uh, we did a stretcher race. Um, like, it, we did a, it was like a boot camp, right? But it wasn't fitness oriented. It wasn't, you know, it was all around, uh, the tactical situation. And the, the, the specifics of how a soldier looks and does things. That's true. Okay, so right. when they pick the Bergen up, they did it wrong, stop. This is how you pick a Bergen up. Mm. Swing it out your back. When they picked up the rifle or held the rifle, well, stop. This is how you do it. When they took a knee, stop. You don't need, that's not how you move. When they were doing the patrol, it's not how you move. Mm. Because on screen, if they look like, you can tell, yeah. you all seen bad war movies, you that can tell a civvy yeah. trying to be a soldier. It's all those little things. Yeah. Yeah. Right, this, you chuck your webbing on and you do the belt up. That's not, no, you wouldn't do your belt up. You'd, you'd clip it in, yeah, and then you'd whap that belt to the side and do it as tight as you can, and you pull the straps down, bang, all those little things. And then one of the last things we did with a stretch race, it's like just to thrash them, to get oh. to sort of affirm that you're a team. Because we, we set it up so that there was two teams that we set it up. They, they worked in two syndicates, if you like. And they were they were the two groups that were on the hill in your time. So you had the guys in Normandy behind you know when you were on the, on on the hill, Stu. The guys in Normandy, which is HQ. And then they had you forward on uh, Sparrowhawk and um, Athens, yeah. Or well, Athens when you from when you down. There's another team. So when we, so when we did the boot camp, there were two teams, and they were the two teams. So all the actors playing those people were those guys, yeah. And the people in charge of those teams were the commanders, were the commanders. So the actor, the film, if yeah. so, who played Mark Wright. He was, God, God rest his soul, he was one of the commanders of the team, and that was David Elliott, did an amazing job. Yeah. And then in um, uh, in Athen, uh, in Normandy, it was Spud, I think I think it was Spud, mm-hmm. the guy who played Spud, which is uh, the magician, Ali Cook, magician's throat actor, amazing. Magician. <laughs> Ali Cook, he was the other commander. So, and uh, I think Stu Pearson was as well, because Stu Pearson then it was the third commander, so Scott Kyle. Yeah. So, you yeah. Know, we, we had all those guys. And we did the, well, listen to this, the MOD training now, yeah. When we did the uh, stretch race at the end, so Luke was there orchestrating it with the other guys. I was working out the rack at the time, and I uh, did the stretch race. And as if, and as they finishing the stretch race in tatters, 
two chinooks fly overhead, mate. Make a little. Oh, brilliant. It's like, go to no. It says, you know, he's, he's trying to get that war ethos. Listen, you're in battle. You're extracting the dead. You need to get, you extract the cash. You need to get back from that. And these two chinooks fly overhead. Yeah, they're like, and did oh, you say anything or did you just let the actors yeah. assume? We just let it. <laughs> they just left it, mate. But they, again, even just that for them, I think we found it so amazing. We had, a, we had amazing feedback for that, you know. We thought, you know, it's pointless doing a fitness oriented a typical sort of military boot camp you need to get them into the role he's going to play and oh. build that that sort of that team uh, that team mentality that ethos and they loved it uh, how did we get on to that? I don't know it was a good tangent though I know yeah it's good for 49 group what are we on about? what are we on so about? it's a new shop it's a new shop buddy I think it started with the shop didn't it? yeah it started with the um is it Pegasus? Pegasus Songs yeah. and Games, yeah. Naturally. So, yeah. Are you in there every day, are you? you yeah, 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 every day. Half a day on Wednesday, sports afternoon. Fair one. What do you do in the afternoon? Hey? What do you do in the afternoon? Play games. It's all well, fun, it's all fun games. You go in there, it's like, it's you go in there, it's games. games over the wall, and there's massive tables with just warlocks and that over there. Yeah. <laughs> warlocks. <laughs> No, Warlock. it's it's the World War Two stuff I like. That's what we're and, and that's cool. what we're doing on Saturday. I'm, I'm running an event on Saturday. You do them every weekend, don't you? Every Saturday. Oh, we do. It's it's um no, there'd be open gaming on Saturdays. Occasionally, there's an event, the Warhammer tournament, so like very quick. Um, but this is just a D-Day commemoration game day. So I'm providing all the miniatures. I've got all the scenery set up. I've I've got Pegasus Bridge branching over two tables. Like I said, it's not accurate. Mm. So we've not got the representation. The we've not got yeah. the glider coming from the same area. There's not going to be the same force org, but it's roughly. So does this start with the gliders coming in? Uh, the the, the powers enter the table having got out the gliders. We How have the glider you, models. Can you choose where they go on the table? No, no, it's a set point. So we're it's reenacting stuff, but it's not quite 100 percent accurate. Um, but basically, what we've got we've got a beach table that's separate. And basically, the Germans defend the beach. They get loads of extra assets in the game, mm. and the Americans get very little to get off the beach. Mm. They do get an initial bombardment and everything mm. as, as they would have done. Um, it's, no, it's not a full beachhead, so it's only small. So instead of having like Omaha Beach and Utah Beach, we've got Omaha section, Utah section, and, and it's just it's scaled down massively. Basically, mm. they've got to get off the beach, but they're getting hit from artillery from another table until the paras take out that artillery position prior to stop the artillery then hitting the beach table to make mm. their job a little bit easier getting off the beach. And likewise, once they got off the beach, they won't be able to go forward unless the Paris take the Pegasus Bridge. So it's not to scale, and mm. it's not to scale with the timeline. We've also got another air battle from a different game system going on in the next room, mm. which again will dictate who gets their superiority during the game. So it's, it's all crazy dice and so stuff. So you've got a game going on a separate table. On four they, separate and tables. They are fe- and they all affect each other. They all affect each other, yeah. That sounds quite mad, doesn't it? Yeah. I reckon so, that's yeah. how I reckon that's how the uh, the, the uh, ops centre did it in uh, Afghan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what they did. Yeah. Stew well, 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 that, roll the dice. Well, well, game, <laughs> well, game is part of the uh, order process, isn't it? So you like J two always play the enemy, don't they? War game is part of the um Orders process, isn't it? Oh, yeah, when, but when you go yeah. to a plan, there's no warlocks, though. No, no, no. Potions. No, no, that's what they're going wrong. See, if they had them. The warlocks and potions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Stu said he'd come on. Tootle said he'd come on. Awesome. Yeah, but I think he doesn't mean it. <laughs> 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 Stu, you're coming on. Yeah, I Toots think the prime yeah. minister. Yeah, did say come on. Toots the prime minister. He would go politician. Uh, what was he before, Reg? He was uh, Royal Irish, wasn't he? He was, yeah. I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was more than that. Remember that smock? Me. Smock he used to wear. What was that? Yeah, the old school smock. Mm. Our smock. Didn't you have an old school? The proper smock? one. You're yeah. on about a Dennison, aren't you? Yeah. You never Are you on about Prince Charles? No. Yeah, Prince Charles. Yeah, fair one. Prince Charles had Dennison. You ever been to? I'm sure he had an old school one. Old school to you, but it's like normal to me and Stuart. You're not on about Dennis and I. No, not Dennis and No, you're on about no, Parasmock. Yeah. Pop, pop, yeah, because yeah, when, when you got in, they changed that stupid material, didn't they? Remember? You had the old school Parasmock with the with the loose light green cuffs and the material was really nice cotton. And then and then they changed it. The cheap version was darker, darker green cuffs, and it was oh, crinkly in that. Yeah, that's why you had to put it in the washing machine for 10 cycles. No, 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 different, like different material, different material. That's what you did. Yeah, different material. Yeah. Have you ever been to the um, 
that remembrance service they have in the Power Edge remembrance service they have in um, London every every Christmas. No, I don't know who organises it. I know Stu. He's, Stu Toot was always there and gives a talk, like he gives an alley talk. Oh. That's why we're three power. Right, <laughs> but you get all sorts of people going there. Um, who is the actor? Who is he? You know the guy in Armageddon? Who plays in Armageddon? He, he's, you know, we all sat down at the oh, table Bruce and tell him the plan. No, I'm not Bruce Willis. And they go, uh, Jason Isaacs. And he goes, you got, uh. a, you got a firecracker in the palm of your hand. Now you like that. You, you, your wife's going to be cutting your steak for the rest of your life. He's the English professor, Jason Isaacs. Him. Oh. He's there. He goes, I think he does it every year. It's like, as oh, a wow. talk, like proper. Why does uh, Tom Hardy wear a Power Edge t shirt? Tom Hardy's pro red, isn't he? He's a, Gonna he's get a him on. He's a wall. Tom Hardy said he'd come on. Get, get him on and grip him. Be like, hey, what are you wearing that for? I don't know, have you? I know, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Why does he wear it? Is he, is he, but I think he's, uh, hasn't, he's just yeah. pro-army, though, is he not? Pro-forces. And just happened to pick that t-shirt up. Reg, anyway. loves Reg. What do you think? I think he's got a mate. I think he's got a mate who's in four power or something. Oh, really? Maybe. Maybe I'm just making it up, but, yeah. I remember seeing it on Facebook, but I think he's got a mate. Is it true that um, the Chuckle Brothers' nephew was in yeah. three power? I was in, do you I remember in, this? I was in death with him. <laughs> in both. <laughs> He was in the platoon above. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get him in and, uh, which one was it? Which one was his brother? The short um, one or the tall when one? I, when I first joined up in 99, <laughs> the guy, the, the lad was in, and he did well as well, you know, he passed, got through it, but the uh, the screws made him bring in, like, at the weekend when you get to go home, you know, they said, make sure you come back with, like, sign copies of, like, pictures. The chuckle of the yeah. And he did, yeah. Is and then they turned up for the pass out parade as well. Oh my god! Yeah, well, both and of them. It, he was he was a good lad, like you know. Yeah, but I think both of them. They were related. Uh, though, I think they? It was, he was a couple of platoons in front of me. Were they not just brothers then. for the show? They weren't related. Um, I don't know. I think they were related, mate. I don't know what it is. Okay, yeah, I think they are related. Yeah. Did you ever hear about when uh, Paul Gascoigne, Gaza, went to Catrick? You ever heard about this? No. So Gaza, in between, re- this is this is. Gen truth. So Gaza in between his uh, <laughs> is in between his rehab since he comes out goes down the path again. Yeah, and he's on his way back to rehab, and uh, he had a he somehow had a connection with one of the screws in depot. Yeah, and uh, he ends up detouring to Catrick, <laughs> going on the lines, mate, and he's there minging drunk, and he's beasting Joe. Press the position down. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Give me fifty press Yeah, that must have got filmed by someone. That must have what? Sorry, got filmed by someone. I I reckon I know a couple of names in my other film. I'm not going to say that. I know a couple of names. One one runs a circus. (laughs) 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 Yeah, guys, yeah, flipping it. Um, did you see that thing about the uh, the article in the paper the other day? About well, been lo- loads of articles. Yeah. Mm. The one the article about no about the but about the female recruit getting getting bullied. Oh, bullied? No, I've not not seen this. Well, well the bayonet a- allegedly, the, allegedly, on the bayonet training. Is that uh, yeah, the one you're allegedly getting about? bullied. Allegedly getting yeah. bullied. Where they got a video and she uh, have you not seen it? He was shouting at her basically. He's like, no, you're you're you useless. Yeah. You're rubbish. Yeah. You're ridiculous. And basically, people got pe- people got mental because it's bullying. And, yeah. and plus, they've jumped on the she's not male bandwagon. Me but too. Then, Hashtag me too. Hashtag me too. <laughs> but then, <that's, laughs> but then, I can't say I had any different, mate. I didn't no, exactly no, have no, a no, pleasurable no. experience. It was, it was flipping actually. horrendous. But that's that's been it. But that's all the training for you. Mm. They, they was. Didn't you I, have a tongue pierced on it as well? Didn't you pull up having a tongue pierced? I haven't watched right? it. Oh. No, I basically gone off the headline. So all this highly inaccurate. Yeah. Hmm. Did you have a tongue pierced? Yeah, but it doesn't make a difference, does so. it? It's like I, I don't. That's the thing with this, is that uh, I, I remember years ago, they were on about when the yellow card system in Depot, weren't they? Where if you felt offended, if you like snowflake it out, mm. you could give a yellow card and the instructor would have to back off. Man, when I was in Depot, mm. I remember, I'd, because, uh, because I did have uh, four sets of socks packed in a certain uh, like waterproof bag in my burger and I only had three sets, I got knocked out mm. and then I got spark, like, sparked out. And you just expect yeah. it. Like, well, I didn't put the extra socks in, so you live and learn. Yeah. But it teaches you, well, you're not going to make that mistake again, which is why you get rigid at what you do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And plus, the, but the mental aspect, it is hideous, but it's not like that That carries on into 
the no, target. And it's not, it's not bullying. Really, it's no. not bullying if you all get the same treatment. Pain yeah. assisted. Yeah. Pain assisted learning. No, that's what it is. No. And <laughs> resilience and and uh, I mean, if you're if you're strong enough to be able to put your pen to paper and go, I'm going to join up. Just that, you know. Then the way the training. St- this is the other thing. You don't know. I mean, bayonet training. You don't do that until quite near the mm. end of the training. Yeah. So at that point, they know what levels you're at. The instructors know, regardless of what uni you're at, that it's it. The way uh, military training is structured is that you don't join up on day one. They go, you are flipping useless. They don't. They've got to. They don't. Right? Mm. Did you have that? Yeah. They joined day one. <laughs> day one, I got day day one. I got measured up. I got punched in the stomach. Yeah, but day what one. did you do, Stu? What did you do? Nothing. Were you Nothing. talking about? Uh, I, had a, I, had a, I had a blood group chat and it went happy, so <laughs> straight away. I'm going to look at life. I'm going to look at life before even all that. When I'm f- spent spend 48 hours at Paris, and this is what convinced me to join. I don't know why. It was, it was mental. And uh, in we had we went down on a Saturday morning to Perth, right? Where the, I think there was um, a training team down at the time, not a training team, a recruitment team down at the time. And uh, got in the morning, put into a, like a, a what, what I call a dorm at the time, you know, put into a room, eight man room. And then, uh, so we're all sitting there waiting, and then the instructor comes in, and there was a, there was a, there was a lad there, and he was in a maroon top. Yeah, and this guy's silly, right? He's just gone down to see, come and join the parents, you know, I want to see what the parents are like. So his first experience was this, this flipping man, I remember this person, this instructor as a man mountain. He's probably my height, right? But you know, you think back, and that perception you've got, yeah, oh my God. Right. He walked <laughs> in, he's got combat on his trousers, he's got a maroon belt on, the maroon t-shirt, he's got a berry on, and you're thinking, Jesus, you are an absolute machine. He looks at this guy, and he goes, flipping mental. Because this lad, who's a civvy like me, yeah. about 17 years old, because he's wearing a maroon, maroon sweater. Mm-hmm. No, where's maroon when you're here? Holy parachute was maroon. Get out. <laughs> Kick him out. He has come back in topless. You go, oh my God. Yeah, that, I decided to join up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the other lad. It's crazy. Remember one guy crazy. Getting, getting hammered because he had Roy the Valkyries as his ringtone. Oh, he really? He wasn't allowed to because he was a joke. Not allowed to yet. <laughs> I met a guy. I was actually with Tiddy. We met. We met a guy who had a reg chart and he wasn't reg. Yeah, yeah that's, that's happened and, before. And we accepted that. it. Mm. We went to um, uh, went with Tiddy and uh, his 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 mate, his daughter's his daughter's fellow, who's a who's a motorbike racer, mm. like proper racer. Um, we went to Snetterton to watch him. What a brilliant day that was! And um, all the caravans there, with all the racers, back to loads of caravans and wagons and that, with all the bikes and all the little, little staying. And you can see the highest flag, the other flag, the highest flag by about t- 10 miles, well, 30 feet, was Pegasus. And you're a titty flag. Right, come on, let's go find out who that is. We're here. So like, yeah, let's go find out who it is. Mm-hmm. So he went these things, trying to see this flag attached, flag attached to his caravan. And um, he uh, looked at the wagon, knocked on the door, no one answers. So he, was, he wasn't going there to go, oh, why have we got a flag? He was going to just intrege. Why, yeah, you know, yeah. why are you flying the Pegasus flag? Well, see you next Yeah, yeah, what's the connection? Yeah. Or, or everyone's yeah. forces or whatever, you know, it could be anything. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, it's, and it's, it was guys next to it, and they said, no, no, that, that's his caravan down there. So you walk over, and this guy was a man mountain, right? And he's one of the pit crew, I think he was. And, um, but you know, old guys, but he's in his, he's in his 50s, early 50s. And uh, he said, what's, up, what's with the Pegasus flag? And he said, oh, my, my dad was, my dad was, like power Reg. I can't remember what the talent said he was. My dad was Power Reg, and the guy he was like started welling up. He said he, he died a couple of years back, and um, he always used to fly a Pegasus flag uh, wherever he went. And I thought I'll, I'll keep my tradition going, and um, and he said he said I've got a confession to make, and he goes, that, mate? He goes, I've got a, a tattoo as well. And he had a t-shirt on. Oh, he take the t-shirt on like a leather thing on. Mm. He pulled it up. And he, had, he had a, a red tat. He had a red tat there, but it was his red tat with his dad's army number on there, and he was oh, like, <laughs> oh wait, mate, yeah, yeah exactly, he's rolling it. Yeah. yeah, but but also if you were a civvy before you joined up, you get, t- you get tattoos on you because you like the picture. Mm. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. and I could kind of understand if a civvy got a red tat because they're like, oh, I really like the parish regiment. I'll get their cat badge tattooed on me. That's a good idea. Not actually thinking that it's a. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. Mm. You no, I don't. I, I, no. I, I, I go away. No. <laughs> <laughs> I would re- remove the arm. Yeah. Short sleeve, um, long sleeve. Yeah, I don't know about yeah. that. I don't know about that. So uh, when you when you um, so could Jackie happen right? Because we oh, oh. do you want one. No, I'm, well, <laughs> I'm, opening it. I'm opening it. Mate, how much is that bottle opener costing your leg? 
How much is that? A few grand. Hey, <laughs> how, how is the leg? Is that the same model as what you had when you first, like, back in when you first had it? Or is it is this uh, like no, a new, uh, improved had, version? The first one I had was a Total E2000. And it was, um... Is it what? It's called a Total E2000. Yeah. And it, it worked on the opposite principle as this. So with this leg, you load up the heel and it makes the knee free. Right. Whereas the other one, you load up the heel and it, it locks the leg. Um, and the other one just wasn't... It wasn't as good as this one, to be honest. I saw one of the other guys at Headley caught one of these. And I was like, I want a KX06 on one of those. Mm. And, uh, got it eventually. And this is what I, you know, this is the same leg. Not exactly the same leg. It's like it's like Trigger's brush. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> it's has different knees, different knees and different sockets, yeah. but it's been the same leg the whole time. And, uh, yeah, I've had this same sort of leg for, so this is what I took to Afghan and that, you know. What? Oh, okay. I, I, take, I was about to say, what, that same one? But yeah, yeah, no, but like, same, cause same you, can get, you can get, um, if you're above knee, generally, you could get, like, uh, bionic legs, which let you... I, I can't walk knee over knee. I can't take weight on the knee, because it is just a hinge. Right. It might look fancy, but it is essentially... It's a well-designed Are hinge, you above the knee, yeah? But it, no, I'm through. Through the knee? Ah, through the knee. Right. So I've got my whole... Of my, really I've got my whole of my fibro bone and kneecap, which just has caused me dramas. You should have got rid of that. The me. kneecap's still in there? Yeah. Why, it's, why it's is just, that? It's just set in there. It's just oh. unnecessary surgery, really. To, oh, you okay. Wanna, yeah. You know... And, um, I'd and probably yeah, go on a sports like afternoon or something, didn't I? Yeah. Probably went to that one. Go on. Wrap it up now, let's get off. <laughs> I'm off now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, go on, how, how are the kids how are the kids with it? You've got two two girls in Yeah, you? well, I mean, my daughter grew up seeing me like this, obviously. She, yeah. she was born uh, a few months after I was injured, so. Yeah. You know, so she, I play that's games. right. She, she that's was, right. She I remember that. It's strange that um, other dads don't have one that, yeah. you know, it's, it's totally normal. She play games right. with you, like. You wake up in the morning, she's hid your legs no, in, the gar- in the garden or something. No, no, Jimmy's done that before. Nothing I played like... fighting with him in the park and he started pulling my leg. Yeah. And I was like, stop it now. And the more <laughs> serious I got, the more funny he thought. Was. <laughs> and he pulled it off and he was oh, running, around no. the park, running around the park with my leg over his shoulder and laughing, giggling his tits off. And uh, I, I trying to hop after him and there's other parents there and I was just thinking, what is going on here? Oh, my God. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that, awesome. That, that is, that's one thing I think... Uh, I I do love it. It's like is is uh, that ridicule you able to give the injured and and back in on that how that mm. is that is that black humour. Oh, do you have a one right. one legged pirate suit? No, no? I think that to um. Stu Pearson in, in Headley Court. Stu, oh, Stu, was it? No. Stu Pearson, sorry. I remember oh, Stu right. Pearson sitting in a... <laughs> Sitting in the fox, right, and he's got he's on the stool, and he was packed, and he had he wasn't next to the bar, and he didn't say put his drink, he's like this, and uh, so he goes, eh, mate, Stu, I'm out the way, because Stu, Stu's got a prosthetic as well, but yeah, yeah. people who don't know, but it's his left leg, isn't it? Mm, so exactly. you guys aren't the same shoe size, you can, yeah. mm. and uh, so Stu goes there, uh, nowhere to put his pint, so he's sitting on the thing with his leg bent, and he gets his leg, and he rotates it, so his, so his prosthetic rotates it all around upside down, so his now foot is facing the ceiling, upside down, he puts his pint on top of the base of his oh. foot. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, it was pretty brilliant. How is, where does Stu get blown off? Is that through He's me? above, he's above, yeah. He's he above. Co- he copped a lot from the minor injured mark as well. Like, right. he got, he got injured on the other leg. Yeah. Horrendous. Mm. Yeah, apparently I stood on a cluster as well. Cause they, the way oh, did they, you? The way they sort of migrate is they go down in eddies and swirls mm-hmm. like, to follow what would be the, the you know, the migration period with the uh, waddies fill up, basically, mm-hmm. so they follow the flow of the of the river. So, yeah, so there's, um, there's a group of them, because it all went in sort of one direction. What, yours? Sort of mind, yeah, yeah, which is why I got the injury to this leg as well, which was where the... Um, because uh, they didn't fragment right, yeah. properly. Because they're um. Because what's they They didn't fragment properly because yeah. they're old too. Well, cheesy, cheesy royal mate. Yeah. On the second tour, cheesy stuff in the lady, didn't he? I think it was or a mine. Ten tour, the ten tour. Because I went on it. I went on the one where the, he was injured. Ah, uh, the third tour. The third cheesy tour we did. Cheesy royal mate. You yeah. don't know this. No. In Afghan. So he's going and he's doing all everything. He's doing all the drills properly, right? So they've gone out the thing. He's never taken the same route twice. You know, he's never. Uh, he's crossing. There was this. There was this. Um, there was this path that the was easy to cross. Never crossed it at the same point. Yeah. He crosses over, mate. Boom! I think, I might be wrong, I think it was a legacy mine, right? But, so, proper go, like, proper blows him. Blows him up, mate. But because it was so deep down the ground, and because it had been heavy rainfall like before, he got away with, like, a fractured heel. 
Mm, yeah. ID blew him to smithereens, mm. fractured heel. Honestly, was that that? No, the, the third tour. Oh, the third tour. Yeah. Ah, 10, yeah. 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 cheesy. He's he's doing that for himself. He's enjoying life. Yeah. He's enjoying life, which is nice. Make, make him a nicer person. Yeah, he's, he's nicer, he's cheesy, a nice guy. grumpy. <laughs> he's um. He's got a little. Uh, he's got a little house up in North Wales. Got his dog. Cottage, mate. yeah. Yeah, he's on it. Project. Yeah, he goes well, you, did you listen to yesterday, the last show? Uh, yeah, I was on yeah, Project yeah. Abbey. He's on there quite a lot. Yeah, um, he goes out into the countryside and grows his beard. And we went to. Uh, we we all met up in uh, Hyde Park last last Christmas. He's just fly by the seat of his pants. He is, and uh, he had no one to look after his dogs. So it was Winter Wonderland. He rocked up with his dogs. <laughs> He walked up with his dogs, two spaniels cutting them out, cutting them out, cutting them out high, I went to Wonderland, London. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, we went and ended up staying at Luke's, flipping out, that was a good night. That was a good night. So you, um, could jack you up, you came back, you got rehabilitated. You got re- rehabilitated quite quick though. If you were deployed in the 08 tour, mm. you went to Headley Court, didn't you? Mm. What, what, what role does Shavas House in Colchester play in terms, now in terms of what was different to when you had the court, do you know? I don't know what that is. Shavas House is the head, Help the Heroes uh, Rehabilitation Place in yeah, College. Yeah, they, they've got rolled It's out. like a mini Headley. I think it, they, they've rolled out long after I left. So I, don't, I don't really know. But was Headley Court predominantly for physical rehabilitation or mental, mental as well? as well. We had the neuros. Neuros were there. Mm. Yeah. Physical. Yeah. What other places? You had Headley Court. Was that, the, that was the main one, wasn't it? Did the, the Queen, mm. what was the what, Queen, what was the Queen Elizabeth, what was the Birmingham place? That's Queen Elizabeth. a hospital. QA, so that's but that hospital. wasn't the rehab place, I don't know. No, that was like your first port call. It was Selioke. Yeah, Selioke. Selioke originally, and then they were upgraded in the 80s. Selioke. That, I mean, that closed down a while back, didn't it? Yeah. Well, no, they've changed it now. It's all the mm. fancy Queen Elizabeth Hospital. So they helped yeah. the heroes play Shabbat House in Collie, right? Mm. Um, I've mentioned it before. They help the heroes run, but like they do, like Luke did his rehabilitation now, and he's still serving, even though it's help the heroes run, but they have like a WO military liaison in there. But as I understand it, the plan is for them to go completely separate to the MOD. The MOD get rid of it because they haven't got the amount of physical, uh, like physical casualties they have now. No. They did before. No, yeah, and and, yeah, and in that term, I help the heroes. I know are changing their their focus to away from physical, more or mental. They're doing mm. a huge amount on it. And that um, that place, Shabbat House, when it's de- when the MOD separate from it, becomes just to help the heroes own place. It's right next to. But you know, where, have you seen it? You got yeah. Brian Bud VC gym, which is military. Mm-hmm. You got the camp, and it's outside. It's got it's yeah. just outside the fence, literally next to the fence. But that place, I think they're going to turn it into like um, a res- a refuge for ex-military. So if you like got an issue, yeah. you go, I'm a clip, or I've been like me and my missus are split. Up. I need a place for a couple of nights, or I need some help. They go oh. get in. There's a room. So they square you away without the out, which I think is fantastic. No. I think it's good. Um. Yeah, we're gonna try and get we're gonna try and get uh, one of the parries on. Yeah. Get their perspective. I think it's interesting idea. to you from that from that mm. from that side of the ship. Oh uh, yeah, so then you did uh when were you out when did you come out of Headley then? When were you deployable again? I don't know, mate. I'd 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 gotten back to camp and I was still like on my first leg I think on crutches when John already called me into the office. And I thought he was, was the RSM. Still. Still at that point, he was there. Yeah, he's not still the RSM. I think no. he's James. <laughs> 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 yeah, so he's like, um, no, he was he was there. Yeah, he was there still as the RSM, and he called me into the office and that, and I thought, here we go. This is the talk to say, you know, you're going to have to find something else, and, you know, we're going to see... Like outside of the army? Yeah, well, maybe not outside the army, but we're going to incorporate you into HQ company. Yeah. You're going to, you know, do, do other stuff and everything. And he was like, come on, you know, put up a sandbag. Blah. You know, so you, you lost your leg. I don't give a fucking shit. At the end of the day, you're still fucking one of us. Um, <laughs> you've got a fucking good mental attitude. We can get you fucking smashed ready court. Get you back out there behind a free free eight, kidding fuckers in no time. That was like his attitude, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I sort of cut. I don't. It was good really because I was worried that it was going to be all. Oh, we can't, we can't, yeah. we can't commit you to it and all that sort of stuff. And I come out of there thinking, fucking hell, he pushed me too quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah. <laughs> but it was good, you know, because it yeah, was, yeah. you know. Obviously, I didn't want to. I didn't want to stay in snipers because my my biggest concern going back out in two thousand and eight was I didn't want to be a liability. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to. You know, it's you know, if someone can break their leg on patrol, but it's far more likely for me to have a broken leg through dust getting into my piston, and then and then I'm a man <laughs> dang for fucking reason. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I maintain my leg like my weapon. You know, but it's still. Mm. 
it would still be an issue. So going the sort of J2 route was clearly the, the way to go. J2 um, intelligence. Yeah. Did you... What courses did you do for that, the military ones? Just like the Tick Alpha stuff and, and some of the... I think I did an A10s course later on down the line as well. Oh, did you? Um, yeah. Um, so you developed, better, you developed better then? Yeah, DV, yeah. Oh, even DV, that, yeah, yeah, that's good. That, yeah. That's good. You could do some cons- DV, no, consultancy well, stuff on the side. There's one up from there, isn't it? Well, is SC the first one, then DV? Yeah, yeah. SC and DV, yeah. I can't yeah. Like, DV costs pictures. like 15 grand. Yeah, it's, it's highly sought after in civil yeah. but it runs out after two years, so mine's well. Oh, does it uh, really? Mine's, mine's gone, yeah. Oh, well, so, uh, your SC, if it's secure, if it's to secu- if it's, if it's mm. the secret, lasts like 20 years. Yeah, but DV is higher up, isn't it? Yeah, DV is higher so up. So that, that, that's got a cooling off period. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then your SC, you got different, you got different types in you, like NATO secret and all that stuff. No, I think you could do some consultancy, mate. Yeah, I, I, I'm happy with my shop playing with my toy soldiers, mate. You're gonna write a book. One of the events and everything. Uh, oh, um, look at that face! He thought yeah, about it. He, he thought something. about There's it. Something going on. There is some, some stuff going on. What would, what would, uh, what would? I'd read it, and I know you're boring. What would, what would, <laughs> uh, what would, what would be your cons for writing a book? Um, Why would you not? I, I I thought about doing it just as just as something to keep me occupied. I wouldn't I wouldn't publish it or anything like that. I'd just keep it for my own memoirs. Like my um Memoirs. My great uncle yeah, just to pass down to my kids and stuff. My my great uncle was um in the tank corps and was uh, X L R D G. You spoke I remember stuff. you spoke a lot about him when we were Yeah, 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 he was, yeah. you know, he was um he was part of my inspiration when I joined, you know, I wanted to go. So what was Remind me, he did some amazing things, didn't he? But did he, oh, did no, he, he, I don't know like... if he did amazing things. He seemed to get captured everywhere. To be honest, he ended up. Yeah, he's a crazy. He got, he got, he got, he escaped in Dunkirk, and he said, you know, he was in Dunkirk, and then he, um, he went out, <clears throat> he went out in the desert with the desert rats for a bit with Eighth Army, did a load of stuff there. Um, what were the ended, tanks? What were the tanks up... then? What were they? He was on Matilda twos, I believe. I've never heard of them. What? Well, Matilda ones with a with a machine. Gun. This this is it. Since I've opened up my shop, I've become a tank nerd. Mm-hmm. I didn't give a yeah. shit about it when I was Power Reg because yeah. I got a fucking hat stuff. You know what I mean? But now I've but now I've got an out. I'm all, I'm all into it. You know, even the modern tanks. I'm, I'm into. You know, I'm at Tank Fest every year, yeah. geeking it up, counting rivets. But anyway, yeah. So they they had the Matilda. You're at what Tank Fest? Yeah. Mate, have you have spoken? You been, have the, you been to Tank Fest? Hang on. Well, uh, you answer my question okay. first. Have you been in touch with Freddie Cryer? Do you know where Freddie Cryer works? No. But well, we're getting Freddie on. We need to get well, Freddie yeah. on. Yeah. Well, he's got he's got a, he does a TV series, mate. So, Freddie Cryer, for those who, who, people who, who, who don't know who Freddie is, X3 Power, he, um, <laughs> he, he, uh, he was in, so he was intelligence as well, and then before that, yeah, yeah he was in Mr. Carlo, that, you guys, wasn't he? Yeah, he was an armed, armoured, uh, armoured v- fighting vehicle expert. Very knowledgeable. And now he he's part of the series on TV. I think it's called Combat Dealers. Yeah, where him and his boss, who's a loaded <laughs> civvy, they go around the world, or him, or him and his or this other guy from the business, they go around. It's about them buying up these proper sought after military vehicles and then refurbing them. Right? German and where, traps and stuff like that. He flew a Spitfire last year. Yeah. It's not even an armored fighting vehicle. It's a plane. He flew a Spitfire, right? But they are not far from Collie. That business, oh. I know. If you go in touch with him, mate, you'll be up there and you'll be driving after those things. I'm telling you now. Oh, proper nerdgasm up there. He, he's <laughs> had he's had the PRA up there. He's had the PRA. Mate, his, his job is get out. Like, can you go and find that tank up and give it a whirl around? That's awesome. Yeah, That's it's so awesome, mate. It's awesome. Yeah, we have to, yeah. Well, yeah. you did not know that, but Freddie. No, I didn't. I didn't he's a proper celeb. <laughs> oh, mate, I, I just lose touch with everybody. I just yeah. get in my little geeky circles and. He's a celeb until you get him down at the book launch for the, for No Way Out for Adam Jarrett's book, yeah. and, uh, and then you and then you get him, he's getting that, drunk. Yeah, he's, he's in that video. Yeah, he's crying into his hand, not crying. Oh, no. no, but he's like at the end of the night, never clear. There's no video of me dancing. There's no. There's loads of videos of me dancing. No, I'm not getting no. naked. Back to the, su- the, sub- <laughs> back to the subject matter. Change the subject. Um, yeah. yeah, so John Hardy basically pushed you. What that? Oh yeah, that's seven. Yeah. That was a, that was in 06 when he was like that. that I, t- I sat down in the office in 06. This was that's you know, right because I remember because I remember quite quickly after that tour we came back because by the time we got back hmm. you were out, you were I remember going to visit you at home. I I came to see you lot coming in from Muscala. No, you didn't. I swear you did when you come in on the coaches in camp. I didn't see you. I came to see you at your house. That's the first time I saw you. 
Yeah, but I, I remember seeing the guys come back from Muscala because it was like months after everybody else. Everybody, looked, else, everybody you, else was on Christmas yeah. Day. You, were, they were and, I, and I was like, well, because I was in Liverpool, didn't I? Yeah, so yeah, I just, yeah, you know, yeah. it would take yeah. you ages. It was like I'm run at the Christmas by the time you guys came back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So, yeah, so, yeah um, there was that. And then um, it was just getting back into things, you know. When, when I was first injured as well, I was obsessed with... Oh, I had this thing I wanted to do P Company again because I heard about this boot neck who lost his leg Captain Jim Bonner who did the commando tests with a baloney amputation and I was like oh fucking hell I could do P Company then and then uh, people taught me out of it why do you think that was your mindset? I just wanted to get back into it I, it was, I think it was just being in denial you know I was just like I want to get straight back into it I, I don't want to I, I want to I remember you talking about the, the, the yeah I remember you talking about the um, by, uh, the the Paralympics team at one point the shooting and yeah I did I did that for a little bit but not enjoy it oh, no it's because it's you're firing these tiny pellets oh, 10 metres away yeah. it leaves a lot of skill but when you're used to throwing you know 200 whatever grain of you know <laughs> a kilometre and a half yeah yeah <laughs> a people a, a people <laughs> it's, it's a little bit different isn't it yeah. the Hemingway saying those of um, the hunting of man. Okay, I remember. Well, I, I yeah. <laughs> should have started on that. that um, I was speaking to uh, John Vickers, who's an ex-Queen's Reg guy, uh, Queen's Regiment, and he, um, he, in fact, he's Ian McKay VC's brother-in-law. He's, yeah, Ian McKay VC's brother-in-law. Funny enough, oh, wow. actually. We're, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, John's coming on. He's on about two weeks' time. He. Uh, I got to this. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, well. Anyway, he went and met with a veteran who was on a bit, who was like on a bit of a struggle at the minute, and John went up to see him up north. And and but this veteran won gold in bow in flipping bow shooting. What do you call it? Bow archery. Uh, archery. <laughs> bow shooting. <laughs> so he won gold. In, oh. he, he he rocked up. He he basically started it. Like, oh, I'll have a go. And then uh, he ended up was quite good at it. This in a short space of time. Got on to um, got on to the the ah not Olympics Invictus got onto the oh, team yeah. for Invictus because yeah, oh yeah. that's amazing I've done it I've got on the team and then won gold mm. won gold yeah ah, bow shooting Prince Harry. archery the Prince Harry's thing in it yeah Prince yeah. I like Prince Harry yeah, yeah. I, I had a brief him an octagon did you got his head down in my brief Kiwi reckons he's his best mate yeah Kiwi reckons he's his best mate he's Kiwi's best mate yeah I think they did some they did a training together yeah. Yeah, because it was he not because Harry was a JTAC, wasn't he? He was a the JTAC, wasn't he? No, no, FAC. Ford Air Controller. He was flying them, wasn't he? No, no, he was flying Apaches. He was flying Apaches in the second time, wasn't he? The first time round, or whichever way it was, he was the Air Controller, the FAC. Ah, okay. Because JTAC, a JTAC's a non, not an officer. But the FAC is the officer, isn't it? And the FAC is normal. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So mm. Harry was, a, I'm sure he's an FAC. And I'm sure Kiwi was on was on a JTAC course for him or whatever course it was with him. Whatever course it was with him. Right, and he's a good bloke. He yeah. seems like a good he bloke. Seems right. He seems all right. Yeah. He's probably getting his head down on my lesson because he was getting ragged by the officers. He started the doing weekend. your in stuff way back when, I've just realised. No, it, well... Yes, you it did. Started, you were doing it in Northern Ireland. It started in Northern Ireland because snipers couldn't be snipers in Northern Ireland as such, so we had to form the intel. So it started there. Yeah. And then, obviously, it was the obvious, you know, job, alternative job option for me mm. from there on in. So that was why, you know, I eventually redeployed in 2008. When did you get out? Hmm? When did you get out? 2004. 14, 13, 14, 13, I can't remember. No, it wasn't that late, was oh, it? Yeah. You got out after me? Yeah, way after Ah, me. I thought, yeah, no, I you went and transferred in one, one power. And then I was in, um, I did Optag for two years, two and a half years, obviously, after all the briefs and stuff. That's right. What was it? It was called something else then, wasn't it? No, it was Optag. What's it called now? M- okay. Mission, uh, it's called Mission, uh, oh God, people are cursing me now. It was Optag. It's called Mission MSC or something. Mission is something. It's something else. M something. I don't know. So someone, when you stick this in the comments, whatever it's called, what J Optag's called now. Um, Optag, Optag is the Operational Training and Advisory Group. They're the, they're the for people listening who don't have a clue. They are the they're the team that or teams who are like permanent instructors and they prepare units. In the UK, 
and and some of the other seas, they prepare units to go and uh, go into operations. So uh, when we were gonna, when we went to Northern Ireland, Afghan, Iraq, we were going to a period of a, of a few weeks with an op tag team. Um, most of the time that would be in the UK. Uh, sometimes you go overseas, like Oman or somewhere else, to do it. Um, and they would train you up. You know, they would let you know what the latest intelligence is in the country, what the latest tactics are of the enemy. Um, you know, the, the, if you're going to a new country with a new language you haven't been to, they give you like language lessons and all the rest of it. Um, that's not tag. Yeah, it's called something else now. So it's not tag. Oh. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> What's next, mate? Are you uh, any plans to expand in the shop? No, not really. I'm quite happy the way it is. I might, I might do um, like commission paintwork on the models and stuff, or commission paintwork. Start, yeah. How long does it take you to paint one model? It depends on size, depends on it, it's, it's a lot of variables. What's the longest it's taken you to paint a? Oh, I don't know. Months. Yeah, we had an argument once. Probably. We had a, we had a, we had an argument once for three years. Oh, that lasted ages, didn't it? it? Did I was wrong as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it lasted so long because someone got his leg blown off. It started, you... off with, it started off with a contact. Yeah. <laughs> Did it? It started off with a contact in um, Nozad. Didn't it? We were having the argument. We were mid row when the contact broke out. Wasn't it? And the fucking boss came over and tried yeah. to settle us down because <laughs> nobody comes yeah. to plays. Yeah. It's, uh, it's an egg. It is, it is what it is, mate. <laughs> Go on, it's an egg. <laughs> I can't remember the answer. <laughs> You were right, because you were arguing against it being a dairy product. Is an egg a dairy product or not? We Is an egg What's a dairy product? What, what do you reckon? No. Instinct, no. You no. reckoned yes. Yeah, I know better now. It took ages. Because yeah. that happened, we forgot about the argument, mm. then remembered it again, then forgot about it again, oh. and then, yeah. Then had the argument then, yeah. Eggs, eggs not a dairy product. <coughs> no. Eggs is a dairy product. Hmm. Um, we need to get down for a game. Have you ever played yeah. any games? Um, do you do any live? Well, you're an hour and a half from here. Oh, hour. Hour and a half. Yeah. Well, hour and twenty, but traffic. Do you do any Vietnam War scenarios, kind of like battle? That's coming out soon. There's, there's going to be um, my 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 favourite war games company is called Warlord Games, and they uh, they produce. Mainly the, mainly the historical stuff. They do mm. a lot of the Napoleonic's ancients and stuff going right way up. And, and uh, we went for like a me and a group of my customers went up for like a Q and A at their HQ up in, up in Nottingham. And uh, one of the first questions I asked was, "What about doing a, a Vietnam version of the game and everything?" And they said that they're, they're going to they're going to look at doing that. Yeah. So do the Americans do it? What are the Americans like with these kind of games? Uh, they they love all the games workshop stuff. They want um, to. They love all, they love it all. They love it all. But the center of the sort of wargaming industry of Nottingham. That is... Really? Where, yeah, yeah. It's, that's the... Why is that then? Because that's where Games Workshop was from. Uh, and a lot of the people that worked there then went off to set their own companies and it's uh, all sort of kept local. And they went to Nottingham rather than London originally because of the cost, mm-hmm. essentially. And this was back in, like, early 80s, you mm-hmm. know, a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they do all sorts of... Well, there's a, an interesting game system called Skirmish Sangin, which was... Um, I thought that, that I think that's what I was thinking of when it, it, it might have been yeah yeah it was made by a, a, a New Zealand group I can't remember the name I should really research it a bit but I can't remember the names but it, it's really good like you, instead of writing your army list down when you have your games mm. which is a list of all your stuff that you're mm. taking because you normally agree on a points limit and then that would make the game fair because you know um, so what, instead of having that you, you do flap sheets for your guys so you give them the, all, the, all their details and everything and you randomly determine mm-hmm. their stats and where in your new position them out mm-hmm. and it's very realistic and for that reason I didn't quite like it as much because it was a little bit too realistic but I, as I was playing it originally I thought this could be a great tool for section SOPs like if you could get the guys over the stigma <laughs> of, 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 of the game rolling the dice and all that sort of stuff it's actually very good the how, game system why is that then how would you how is it well it? doing your actions on you know because like the, the way the way the game works is you'll do stuff like you would normally do you isolate a compound you're going in to do something and obviously something's going to happen. Because so you were saying it would be beneficial for learning the process? and, and, and yeah, Possibly learning the process, but I reckon section level stuff, because normally war game is done at a higher level when, when an OC goes through his plan and the J2 are trying to scupper him, mm-hmm. equipped with what the enemy's previously done. But like if you did it with a section level, maybe even platoon, but probably section, 
you're getting the details of what the guys are doing on the ground mm -hmm. if something goes wrong because mm -hmm. it's at that level because mm -hmm. it's a very low skirmish level game but it's very complicated rule set so it'd have to be simplified I think mm. but it's interesting because you go out to do something like a, a, a task like isolate compound do this do a search <coughs> do whatever and then obviously someone gets wounded then the whole purpose of the game changes to getting the guy out so the whole everything changes as things progress and there's no real winners or losers but you've and you got that game on the shop it's just a book it's just a book you have to source what? everything else out elsewhere which means it's just a book the game is a book and you use your own pieces yeah it? your own dice yeah. yeah so you have to source your, your models from have you got it all in the shop is there a way that, that we can play it and we'd have to pay for anything <laughs> hey no um, at probably, your probably shop. not the Sangin because I, I could possibly source it but well, you the World book? War 2 stuff's better yeah. Should we well, another World War II game? World War II yeah. game's better, in my opinion. We have to wrap this up. Yeah, cool. Mate, how long has that been? It's been like an hour and a half. Wow. That's been ages. It's quarter to seven. Absolute pleasure, buddy. Go, yeah. Absolute pleasure, buddy. Yeah. Um, mate, get you on again. Yeah. Cheers, Stuart. Any time. It's good to see you, mate. Cheers. over his shoulder and laugh and giggling his tits off and uh, I, I trying to hop after him and there's other parents there and I was just thinking <laughs> what is going on here oh my god that's awesome yeah. that, that's, that's, that, that is that's one thing I think uh, it, I, I do love it it's like he's, he's uh,